topic number two is, are we blaming the white man for this? Should they be charged as adults? So let's, let me share my screen. Let me switch up the browser this time. Uh, yeah, let me switch up the browser this time. And uh, let's see if it streams better. Let's watch the video and then we'll have a discussion on it. There's a story out of PG County, Maryland that's making its way around. Certainly shocking. A group of three teenage boys ran up on a No, the video is not showing. This story, but All first, right, let me, uh, take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Click the notification bell oh, for all updates. If you're, let me see if I can fix that. I don't know why that wouldn't work. Um, push come to show. I'll let's go back. You know what? Let me just go back to. Uh, let me just go back to the. Browse I was in. Wait, press the cog in the corner and don't play it on HD. Play it on yeah, a lower yeah. resolution. Yeah, I know. I know. I've, I've the, the last video when you mentioned it in the chat, it was on like 240 or something like that. So that wasn't the issue. And this is on 360 right now. Um, let me make sure I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, you guys can see this, right? Let's watch it and then we'll discuss it. <laughs> We can't hear it. I see it. Boy on a school bus to take his life. And according to the mother of the victim, it was a 14 year old girl who planned out the whole attack. So far, you have three of those four teenagers involved behind bars, and one is on the loose. The 14-year-old girl is one of the three arrested. Her family is trying to get her released, while the victim's mother is saying that she's the one who planned it all. Do not let her out. She believes the girl will do this again to somebody else. We're going to get into this story, but first, take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Click the notification bell for all updates. If you're watching from PG County, Maryland, let me know below in the comments. One teen boy was left on the school bus along with a bus driver and a bus aide. After the bus stopped to drop off other students at Iverson Street and Sutler Drive in the Oxon Hill area of PG County. This happened on May 1st, 2023. That's when police say three teenage boys wearing face coverings got on the bus and attacked a 14-year-old male student. One of the boys reportedly pulled a gun and attempted to shoot the victim multiple times at point blank range in the head and chest. But fortunately for the victim, the gun malfunctioned, so the teenagers beat him instead before fleeing the scene. All of this caught on video. According to prosecutors, there was a 14-year-old girl who was behind all of this. She's the one being accused of planning the attack. Two of the three boys, one 14-year-old and one 15-year-old, they are now behind bars along with the 14-year-old girl. All of these teenagers charged as adults with attempted first and second degree murder in related counts. One other 15-year-old boy, the one with the gun, is on the loose. According to a preliminary investigation, police said the charged teens and the victim knew each other and the attempted murder stemmed from a dispute. This is, this is really bizarre. Yeah, very. A third teenager appeared in front of the judge today charged in that attempted school bus murder. You can see it all going down in this video here. 
And the details are just really upsetting. These three boys appeared wearing masks and hoodies pulled over their heads. They got into a school bus in Oxon Hill. They pushed right on by the driver, went up to a middle schooler, put the gun to his chest and pulled the trigger three times. Thankfully, nothing happened because the gun jammed. The teenage girl who was in court today, however, was not in these photos. But prosecutors say that doesn't mean she isn't just as guilty. And wait until you hear what's next. Scott Broom was in the courtroom today. He joins us now live. And Scott, you really got the sense from prosecutors today just how young um, these teens were potentially and how dangerous this could have been. Yes, I, I generally here, the majority of the kids involved are eighth graders. And this is very, very dangerous. Now, normally hearings involving juveniles are not open to the public, but in this shocking case of attempted murder by children, the young teens are charged as adults. So with this surprise arrest over the weekend of a girl, we were all completely unaware of, there is yet another hearing today that was open to the public. And what we're learning again is chilling. It was a hit squad style attack on a Prince George's County school bus caught on video. A boy with a gun tries to shoot and kill a 14 year old while two accomplices hold the victim down. Had the gun not jammed repeatedly, the victim would surely have died, investigators have said in court. And today in a Prince George's County courtroom, we learned the attack was allegedly orchestrated by an eighth grade girl who's accused of texting the attackers before they rushed the bus to let them know the victim was seated and the last rider left. The 14-year-old girl was arrested over the weekend and charged as an adult with attempted murder. Tense bailiffs in the courtroom watched to keep family members separated. The suspect's family begged for the girl to be released into home detention before trial. But arguments by attorneys revealed there are allegations of gang ties. And the victim's mother begged the judge not to let the girl go home, saying her family and the school bus driver would be terrorized that the girl could orchestrate another attack. She planned this out and she set it up to a T, the victim's mother said. Judge Byron Barriano ordered the girl held without bail in a juvenile facility, saying that home detention may keep her off the streets, but would not prevent her from planning more deadly mayhem. Prosecutor Aisha Brayboy reflected on how dangerous these suspects are alleged to be despite their young age. In this case, but we hear parents say, uh, you know, my child's a good child, uh, you know, that they, they weren't involved. I can't believe it, but believe it. It happens, unfortunately, far too often in our communities, young people are making adult decisions that have adult consequences. Uh, my office has no choice but to pursue justice, and that's what we're going to do. I agree with the prosecutor here. You have too many children making adult decisions, and those decisions come with adult consequences. In this case, for sure. As you can see, they are all charged as adults. And then another thing, they're 14 and 15 years old in middle school. Is it just me or they're supposed to be in high school by now? I don't know. They could be a little behind in school. But for the family of that 14-year-old girl, you just can't go around planning hits on people's lives and then expect for her to be able to go home. What are they thinking? All right, here at WUSA 9, we are not naming any of the kids involved because they still have juvenile status. In total, we now have two boys and a girl who are in detention accused of attempted murder in this case. But the key suspect you've seen again and again in that video, the boy with the gun is still out there somewhere. They're looking for him, and so is the gun. So the victim's mother says her entire family remains terrorized, afraid that this kid may try to silence witnesses or take some other action. So uh, uh, the case is still very much open and a lot of fear about the danger these kids allegedly represent in the community. Reporting live at the Prince George's County Courthouse, Scott Broom, WUSA 9. You know, listening to the details here, I think we're like a lot of the folks at home listening. We're, we're talking about teenagers here and a 14-year-old girl accused of orchestrating this attack. Hopefully they find this 15-year-old or teen gunman sometime soon. Scott, thank you. Exactly. It's crazy because they're all kids. Now, authorities are still searching for that 15-year-old boy on the run. The victim's mother fear that he will go out and attack someone else. And they're already accusing him of doing just that, allegedly two days after this incident. And apparently he's lost his juvenile status because they released this picture of him 
PG County Police and the U.S. Marshals Capital Area Regional Fugitive Task Force. They're offering a combined reward of up to $12,500 for information that leads to the 15-year-old's arrest and indictment in the attack of the 14-year-old boy on the school bus. Police identified him only as Baby K. First, I'm glad they charged all of these heathens and got them off the streets. Hopefully they hurry and catch baby K. He's not that sophisticated to really hide and he can't go anywhere. So they should find him pretty soon here. To do what they did, there's no way any of them should be out on the streets. We're talking about point blank range. At least that's what these idiots tried to do. Obviously, it wasn't time for the 14-year-old victim to go. He survived this attack, so I hope whatever he was involved in, take it as a warning. Get out of these dealings, whatever he's in. Whether it's being around the wrong crowd, running with gangs, he was possibly involved in something that he was not supposed to be in. As far as the 14-year-old girl that prosecutors say planned this attack, this girl is dangerous. I hope they remember that before they try to give her some sort of plea deal because that's usually how it goes. Even if they're the masterminds, they always seem to get less punishment than their male counterparts who carry out these attacks for them. But so far, she's been charged as well as an adult, and they need to hold her accountable. We already know these boys are about to take a ride down the road for a long time. They're going to be locked up with the most dangerous men in the state. So it's a lot coming their way, especially this 15-year-old who was on the loose, Baby K. Word is he's already charged in another homicide. Two days after the attack on the bus, they're saying it was him who possibly deleted the 23-year-old sister of one of his accomplices. This little guy is going down. He ruined his life forever. He's going to get life. The other guys will do some hard time as well. I don't think they'll be there forever, but they've still ruined their young lives too. I can easily see them getting 15 to 25 years. So yeah, they're going to be held accountable. All I'm saying is I hope this girl doesn't end up with probation or a couple of years. But again, if that happens, it won't be the first. People really need to wake up. There are violent teenagers on the streets, violent adults on the streets, and they are not all male. There is a growing population of dangerous females. They will set you up and get your life taken away. And we've seen many cases around the country where the women are losing their lives in these retaliation terminations. That's because most of them are not dealt with by the court system. Instead of them getting 20 years of life like the males, these females are getting light years or none at all. So they're back on the streets to terrorize others and also end up becoming victims themselves with the street justice system. It's all unnecessary behavior, all out of order. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. These kids are really just messed up today, but PG County was always known as the most wealthy majority black county in America. I think they just slipped down to number two within the last year. Can anybody tell me what is going on down there? Special thank you to Romel. I appreciate you, Romel, for all of your support, as well as our brothers Charles B., Philip, Dark Power, and shout out to Lori. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis, want the truth from a woman's perspective, then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel. And All right. Should have reached topic number two is, are we blaming the white man for this that we just saw? Should they be charged as adults? Shout out to Lero in the chat being funny. She says, Coco, I don't like this early ending show thing. You know, I'd be sliding late, cut us in half, just put the dagger in my heart like that. I, I appreciate you, Lara, for coming through. Um, yeah, Bakari, what did you take from this video and prompt? Put them in jail. I'm going to tell you something. This is what I was just talking about. You'll find a lot of people on here. They're going to somehow figure out a way to give those type of people a pass. Yeah, I know they're young, but that's what pissed me off when people be talking about, yeah, our warrior class locked up. It's your, it's those people that's teaching them young folks to do it. Now, in the state of Georgia, with them not squeezing that trigger, nobody would be in jail past 18. They would be in whatever they call it, where they send the youngsters, they would be in there till they're 18 since they didn't kill nobody. And when they get out, if they ain't getting no trouble in there, they wouldn't have a record. But this is the nonsense I be talking about. And no, it ain't no white man. It's it's almost what we look up to. And when I'm saying we, of course, nobody but on the panel, I guess. 
nobody in the chat. But this is the type of stuff black people respect. Because you can go and you can hear people call them. Y'all have heard them. And I always check them on it. These are warriors. These are warriors. See, them the soldiers. No, they ain't. See, the ones like, no, no, they're not. And they're messing up these young boys. Now, I know how they're doing things here sometimes in Georgia with a girl doing that texting. The guy they went to jump on, he may have not even been in a game. He may have been, I'm telling you, he may have been friends with somebody in a game. Now, this is how they do it here. This is what he may have been friends with somebody in the gang, right? So what they do is they don't attack the gang member. They'll go attack the gang member's friend. If it's a girl and she cool with a dude in the gang, they won't attack the gang member. They will attack the girl in her family. So the young dude, the young man, I'm glad he's okay. I'm glad that gun jammed up. And if he is in the game, hope he get out of that. Uh, whatever people he's around, if he's not in the game and he just happened to be around those type of people, I hope he get out of that situation. But this shit is getting out of, pardon my French, but this is, is, is getting out of hand. This is why I say we need a street presence. And I will continue to say this part of the reason because everybody has a street presence Except really, except the people who say they want to fix the community and the community can do better. Them gangbangers most definitely got a street presence. But whatever's going to happen, it needs to happen. And those people, they need to be punished because it won't stop there. Since we don't want to punish them and we can make excuses for them, I'm going to tell you something. Somebody, when they shot up in my house, when I made it with my gun down, they were gone. I hear people be like, yeah, I wouldn't say publicly I would have killed them. I said it publicly. I would have killed them if they had been out there when I made it down with my gun. And I mean that. You can't just go around doing it. No, you got to think about they're young. I know. I, I know. And they wouldn't have lived and they would not have lived to get my age if I had made it down. And I mean that. See, we got plenty of excuses and reasons for people that do that. And, and, and we have to get away from that. I know what this system has done. I know what this system still do. But we got to get away from taking up for folks who's basically working for the system. Shit, I get it, Mike. I'll uh, uh, thank you for that, Bakari. I'll, I'll say too, it's kind of a wild. To me, it's a wild idea of surviving a assassination attempt, and only surviving it because the gun jam, and now having to push forward with your life. That's a that that's a hell of a thing to to put someone through. Uh, uh, let's hear from Oni on this one. Yeah, so I took a few notes. Um, what can I say? Uh, well, this is the first thing that jumps out to me. And this is, like, we have to come to terms with this. Who is arresting these kids? It's this white boy. You know? And this is why it's like, really, how at war are you if you have to get this white boy to clean up your community? Right? And, of course, you know, we're, we have, you know, some people who are going to be anti-cop, which is, you know, Play what you will, but if you're not cleaning up your own community, right? Who is now? No honor among thieves. Apparently, this uh, young boy shot one of his accomplices' sisters, which is just like you know. So yeah, and I'm kind of confused. Is this 14 year old boy that was nearly killed? Is that boy white or black? I don't even know. You know, um, as far as try them as an adult. I mean, again, we are appealing to another people's system to enforce justice, which sucks. But if that's the case, then sure, obviously they should try them as adults. You know what I mean? Uh, it sucks that we're not trying our own people, though. 
you know and and of course what, what they call trying your own people is called quote unquote street justice but even that's not but even that is out of hand and not really advancing or going anywhere uh but as far as the thing about kids is this the kids are getting older these days and i think these laws that were written once upon a time you know related to a different type of kid you know uh but 14 year olds planning what like i tell you sometimes i say to myself i love for my my son to be around more kids you know and obviously you know i'm trying right but I was walking by these kids. They were really well spoken. They were like eight years old, ten years old, or whatever. And they're talking about killing each other, like setting up killing each other. You know, I don't know why anybody thinks that as soon as somebody hits eighteen, then they feel the desire and urge to kill somebody. You know, a lot of people are too damn smart, and they feel like, hey, you know what? If the laws are weak on children, right, then whatever like i'll do stuff before i'm 18 you know and it's not just black people obviously white people do it too there was this uh joke about and it's in other countries i remember there was this joke about these guys uh maybe like esotania some some weird european country where they uh they gave this kid uh like an 18 year old birthday party because he was like troubled since he was like 12 or some shit and then they finally could you know put him away for good so they bought him a cake you know, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, people understand this whole juvenile system is very weak, particularly in this a- day and age where, you know, once upon a time, kids didn't have any access to Internet. They were their parents, children. They they were only really influenced by school. Then eventually we got the music and the music kind of gave us some ideas, but we weren't necessarily killing each other. There were gangs, obviously, but we were kind of stayed away. But now it's just come on. So yeah, if if it were the case that we have to appeal to another people, you know, the colonial, the, it's a colonized situation. We have to play into the colonial masters in order, well, not masters, but the colonial people in order, the colonizers in order to clean up and and get rid of the crime in our community. Then yeah, let's ask them because obviously we're not doing it ourselves, you know. And unfortunately, this fourteen year old boy is going around killing people. And 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 it sucks to be one of these kids who got caught because this guy went in. Well, somebody killed his sister. You know, like that's the kind of situation that we're in, where it's like this boy's sister is killed. As far as whether the girl's to blame, I mean, sure, we don't really know the details, but obviously, you know, there's probably something going on there. I don't know, right? Um, but you know, clearly, the 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 bigger issue is. You know, young people are growing up way too fast. And they probably always grew up fast. You know, there's a, in the Caribbean, they call, you know, girls who, or girls or guys who have sex early fast or whatever. This is fast, not in a sexual way, but in a violent way. And it can cause trouble and ramifications into the future. That's all I'll say. Appreciate that, Oni. Bwani, you heard everything everyone has to say. What say you? Yeah, yes, sir. I, for me, I, I personally believe in this thing called familial punishment. You know, where if if you are a child under a certain age and your children commit human he, uh, heinous acts, I think that the, the parents of these children need to be drugged into court to answer for some of the acts that their, their children commit. Because you live in a society where you can't tell children anything, you can't tell the parents anything. You know. Uh, a, a teacher, if a teacher tries to correct a child, you know, the parents will rush up there and say, well, what you tell him? I'll be the disciplinarian for my child. I'll do this for my child. I'll, okay, no problem. So when your children commit tenious acts, you should be calling to account for the acts that they commit. You know, we, we need, since, since the ch- ch- children are not being held accountable as adults, well, in this particular instance, they are being held accountable as adults. But I think that for some actions in terms of what children do, I think that you should haul their parents into court. I believe that. I believe that they should be made to answer for some of the decisions, in particular, murderous decisions that their, their, their children uh, would seek to create havoc within their community. This is a community that, because Oni mentioned that, you know, in terms of cleaning up the community, this is one of the wealthiest communities, black communities in, in North America one of the richest countries in the history of man. Why do you need to resort to act 
to, to carry to take to carry out murderous acts against someone you don't you disagree with. Murderous acts. You know what I mean? Where you have all the, the advantages in life. You wanna you wanna act like a street thug. You know what I mean? So I I, I man, you know, like I say, I, I personally think that you know parents should be held accountable for some of the acts that their children commit. It's as simple as that. Maybe they'll think twice in in, in committing certain acts. Now uh, the question is asked whether the white man is guilty for that. Well, you know, the white man created the gun. <laughs> the white man created the gun, so I can let him off of that completely. But um, as my brother Makari would say, he's always responsible. <laughs> but um, um, I, I just think in terms of some of the things that these guys do without no recourse, they don't give a shit about human life. Well, let's see if you really don't give a shit when, you, when we haul, haul your mother into court to answer for the crimes that you commit. You know, like like um uh, uh Oni was saying, some of these laws are antiquated. They're old. They are outdated, and they need to. You know, we need to take a second look at some of these so-called laws. You know, but you're living in a society in a system where if you was to try to change the laws, you know, you get pushback. But I, I believe that some of these laws need to need to be looked at again. Need to be looked at again because if you have no concern about human life. Let's see how far that goes when we haul your mother into court or your father into court to answer for some of the actions that you committed. Maybe that will put a harness on some of the things you do on a daily day basis in robbing, stealing, killing, whatever. You have no excuse living in one of the most wealthiest counties in North America. You have no excuse. And you pulling guns on people and, and <laughs> God forbid, if, if, what if the gun was working? What if the gun was working? You know, but you know that that's why that's all I have to say about this particular prompt, man. Well, let me say I this a, though. I got a quick question. I got a quick question. Uh, is this prompt written in an odd way? Is it? it, it, it just, just looking at the prompt and the, the the material that goes along with the prompt. Is this prompt? Indicative of a of a certain mentality in in black society. Anyone could answer that one. Bakari, uh, yeah, the mentality just prompt represents the mentality of a certain uh, a demographic, certain people in black society. I would say yes. I would say yes. I want to let somebody else answer the question. Before I, because I want to say some things on what uh what Bawana said, but I'll wait till somebody else answer the question. But I, I don't understand the question. Um, we know where we're coming from. We know we know we're coming from. <laughs> yeah, it's just that uh, the 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 way the prompt is constructed, it 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 seems to be leaning a certain way, a certain way of, you know, uh, black folks are always the problem, right? It, it, in a way, it kind of leans towards saying, like, you know, you're always blaming white folks, but black folks is always a problem. So I I, I just wanted to know if, if, well, I guess I was asking, did anyone else pick up those intentions by how the prompt was written? And is that a problematic approach? Well, I'll say this. I'll say somebody, as somebody who likes to shift questions, I would say that this is a good way to frame it to drive engagement for the question. Because, because like, really, since we have to put a question, it's like, this is a good way to just frame the question. I mean, I get that it might be a little bit on the negative side, but at the same time, it's like, because you have to have a question, you should have some sort of position in order to frame the conversation. Because I have, like, I sometimes submit questions and a lot of them, like, I don't necessarily agree with the stance there, but it's, it's in order to drive a conversation, you do have to take some sort of stance, you know? And, like, and so, you know, you could easily, you know, write the question and say, hey, these kids are bad, or hey, this, you know, so on and so forth. But I think that just because we're required to give questions, uh, you know, because it's a question that we're, a question prompt, like this kind of question does, um, like it does go to a larger context, and it, not, it doesn't necessarily reflect on, what the author might have implied, like meant. It could just be, hey, look, I'm putting this inside of Shoot the Breeze 
and therefore it should be related to some wider context. Because you know, for what it's worth, Truth the Priest does seem like a uh, 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 you know, like where we had no questions in a larger sense, and, and not to say that we're just gonna, you know, like like it's just uh, it's just ha it just has a little bit more weight to it. So I, I actually think it's a good question, even though I know the tone is bad, but I, I can see why if you had to do a question, that's what it, that's what it is. Yeah. I, I don't All think right. that. Right. I, I, before I let Brother Wakari rock, because I know you're waiting. Um, quickly, you know, I don't. Me from my standpoint, I don't get into this whole engagement of blaming a white man for everything. I believe in. I'm a big believer in personal responsibility. A huge believer in that. As as long as if you call yourself a Gavi, you are a personal responsibility man. You know what I mean? You are a personal responsibility man. Now I understand the powers that be is the powers that be, but I believe in this whole idea of agency. So I don't get off on blaming a white man for, for any action because I understand that just you have white devils that exist in our society. You have black devils that exist in our society, but we still must live in a society. We still must exert our own personal responsibilities, our own genius, our own effectiveness in the society. I'm a man. So imagine me blaming another man for my own personal actions or feelings. I don't get off on that. So I don't, I, like I say, it is, for me, it's phrased very weirdly. After hearing the discourse, this, this, the kind of conversations we have on this particular platform, we, we don't get off on blaming the white man for every, everything. We get off on personal responsibility and being proactive in our communities. So I don't know if that's what people are hearing, but that's not the reality of what actually is taking place as we have discourses on this panel. Okay. And technical difficulties, that means everything except the one or last sentence. You actually just froze up and I couldn't hear nothing. But uh, I would say this to Bawana. The parents shouldn't be responsible, man. Because I'm telling you, man, look, the other day I told you it was six. That was just this year. In the last two years, just at my daughter's school, ages 15 to 19, there's been at least 12. This is just at her school. 12 kids has gone to prison for murder within the last two years, bro. You can't always, uh, uh, you know, there's some parents out there that might be involved living their life or some parents that try to protect them when they do wrong. But I'm just, dude, like I said, it wasn't just my house. I wake up, bullets flying over my head, 10 bullets going it ain't just my house. It was at least in a three-month span. There were at least six. There was at least six houses shot up. There's other other young. Uh, some they tried to jump him. He whooped one of them. So instead of fighting him, they go to his house. Five of them. He ain't out. Knock on the door. He ain't at home. So they drag his sister out the house and slap him around. Why would you arrest the parents for them going around doing stuff like that, man? Brother Bakari, you are a single dad. You are a single yeah. dad. You are about, you have two collegiate students right now, about to have three. About to have three. Okay? There are some things you would have done as a parent. Because I don't think, now me personally, after listening to Hebrew, I don't think that he have murder in his heart. Where they get these things from? You know, you could say TV, you could blame all manner of different things. And, and I agree. There are some things that the kids are bent. Some, some kids are just bent. And I agree with that. But there are some things, as we do as parents, you know what I mean, that you put in certain things in the mind and the hearts of your children, your jewelries. And I don't see from coming up under me if I produce a bank robber, a murderer, a stealer, or a criminal, then I have to take account for that because I, I guess maybe something I did wrong, even though I, I feel like I would have done things right. You know what I mean? There are certain things that you would have done or put in place to produce a certain result, and you're seeing the results right now. You know what I mean? So if you could produce the positive results, in my brain, it is, is obvious or is reasonable to, to deduce that you, you could produce a negative result you know, in your parenting skills. That's why I say sometimes you have to point for the parents and make them accountable for the child that they produce. And 
and I can agree with that you have to make them accountable for the child that they produce, but man, you're going to be a whole lot of parents uh, locked up for something. They might have been at work and kids sneak out the house and go do that. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, but you know, like, am I saying throw some of these young people away who's involved, right? I'm not even saying just now, if you can kill somebody and you ride around doing stuff like that, you know, and, and I you, you, and I ain't even saying they can't change their life, but you want to change your life somewhere else. But I would say the bigger problem for me, right? We know all the systems that's been put in place to keep us acting a donkey like this, right? So the bigger problem for me is, right, is what we're not doing as a community. That's why I always talk about the mentoring program that I was a part of, right? Because I know we're going to find people that's going to blame uh, the school system. They educate our kids, right? But when I talk about the mentoring program, right, this is why I say we have to learn to let people keep their ideologies, right? And don't always beat up people's ideology, let them be who they are. The mentoring program, I this one day in school, the teachers, they asked me to be involved. But it was started by a preacher of a church and a deacon. <clears throat> and they, this program had somebody inside of the school all day, every day, five days a week from school opening to school closing. Then they was in mentoring with us three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for at least two hours. So it's things that, but you know, when, uh, cause we didn't have a building or anything at that time, we using the uh, boys and girls club. So when the COVID hit, things cut back, but I've been talking to people and we trying to bring it back. But I would say it's as a community, we have failed. Cause then most of these, most of these little boys that are doing this come from Single parent homes, they angry, ain't no man in their life. Their dad ain't there. Their mama probably going through some BS with some other man, and they taking the anger out. They in here, they joining these damn gangs. And, they, and, 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 and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But when I was young and I did stupid stuff, I wouldn't have wanted my mama to get punished for, you know, me almost facing, for me, facing 20 years for breaking an internet with attempt to kill. I'm not trying to act like I'm perfect, but what I it's the community. As a community, I heard it was a guy teaching me about African, right? We say we African people. That's where our ancestors come from, right? And I was talking, I was studying, he was telling me about African polygamy a long time ago. It was an African guy. Like the way it was done. Do you see how we were shunned single mothers and we don't want to deal with nobody as a child? So they say one of the reasons a man might have so many wives is like, say the father wouldn't there. may have been killed in war or something. Right? This is a long time ago, of course, ancient. But he was like, but that was done. But then a the man would bring that woman in so the woman could have a man for protection and the child could have a man in their life. As a community, I think we are failing our community. What happened to the, it take a village to raise a child? I'm not saying throw these kids away for good, but they do need some type of scare. Even if you got to get the Buddha warrior who was on damn YouTube to scam. But they do need, this is my take, they do need some type of scare to be scared straight if we ain't going to get out here as a community, as black men, and do what we are supposed to do. Now you the mic. Yeah, let me, let me, if, oh, sorry. Quickly, on it, I'll let you rock. If you thought that your mom's was going to be hell accountable for any things that you would have did as a young man, do you think, that, wouldn't you think that you would have think twice before I actually do it? <laughs> I'm quite sure I would have, but I don't think that they should be. It's not this, but that's just me. I don't. I don't think. I. 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 I don't think that they. I. I don't think that they should be held accountable. You know, especially 
you know, because, you know, we got to look at, let's say you hold the parents accountable, Bawana. Let's say this 14-year-old and the mama, daddy, like, or the mama, or the dad. We ain't even got no gun in the house. We don't know where the hell he got a gun from. He sneaked out the house. Or whatever, however it happened, right? But I'm going to say this again, right? My thing, if we don't get a better street presence, people don't think the streets mean nothing. I'm telling you, they learning this from. Sorry, Bonnie, you, you, you cut out. understand what you're saying. People think twice if it was about their mom. I guess they would. Hopefully they would. <laughs> but let, let me say this, though. I don't think everybody's going to think twice because it's their mother. And I feel like a lot of people will weaponize, like a lot of kids, because like I said, these kids are fast, right? They will weaponize things against their mother, you know, or against their father. You know, some of these kids don't even have fathers. Let's just, you know, let's just call it what it is, right? Uh, some of these kids are angry at their fathers. And a lot of times young boys become angry at their mothers, right? And that moment of anger is when they're doing this kind of nonsense. Like you stop any of these kids, you stop, uh, uh, what was it? You stop um, that boy who shot the other kid, right? You ask him, hey, how is, how is your home life, right? He's probably, if his mother's alive, right? He's probably upset with her. He's probably angry at her. He's probably frustrated with her. He's probably disappointed in her. You know, he doesn't care if something bad happens to her. He's probably given up on that life. If a man is willing to shoot another man's sister, he doesn't care what happens to his sis his mother. Okay? Uh, so, I mean, it's not like he's like, okay, my mom's off limit because I shot your sister. It's like, no, he understands. Hey, look, like F life. He doesn't care about human life. As far as I can tell, he probably tried to shoot some boy probably just for money, you know? Uh, probably a boy he doesn't even know. So, so I don't think, I mean, obviously I get where Bon is coming from with this, you know, um, you know, punish the parent, but a lot of times, you know, it's assuming that one, these parents can control these kids because the outcome that we see with a lot of these, um, children is not really necessarily, a like an entirely a reflection of their bad parenting. Obviously there are better parents than the ones that these kids have. Sure. But what ability do people even have to be great parents? You know, I might have the luxury of, you know, let's say homeschool, right? But not everybody has that luxury, right? Or not everybody's willing to make that sacrifice, right? And to compare uh, the behavior of my child to the behavior of, a, let's say, a single mother with, you know, a abusive boyfriend and she's, uh, you know, she can't really watch her kid. Her kid goes to school and her kid fell into the gang life because, you know, there's nothing at home. She can't afford anything for him. You know, she was robbed before. She was stolen. She's a victim of so much. You know, if all that's happening and then her kid, like, she can't even control her kid. Her kid gets into fist fights with her. Her kid fights her. Her kid yells at her. Her kid says, fuck you, mom. You know, I hope you go to hell type shit, right? Uh, and then her kid does something stupid, right? You know, she can't kill her kid. She can't, you know, she can't do anything really to her child to really wield him in if it's a young boy full of testosterone who's 14, 15 and has a fucking handgun, right? Uh, if she can't do any of that stuff, uh, and then all of a sudden the kid does something, and instead of the kid being punished, we're like, okay, get this mother, like, put this mother on the electric chair. It's like, wait, what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you know, this boy is probably making his mother's life difficult. And I don't know if there's a video already circulating of this boy who's like, looks like him and his mother are about to scrap. Now, she's not the best example of a mother. No way. But at the same time, it's like, what, what kind of Herculean tasks do you expect of these single mothers? You know, and if, if we are, if we're saying these mothers, these single mothers cannot raise uh, black boys effectively, then why in the world would we then penalize them for failing at raising these black boys? Well, for, for after 14, you say 14 years old, 14 years on the uh, tutelage, you know, that their, their, their scope of the world is extremely limited. The only thing they would have gotten at them 14 years, for the majority of the time, would have been spent under you, under you as the parent, you know? So they nah. want they want they, well, you know, y'all, y'all are dads. Y'all are dads. I'm not a dad. So y'all, they would have watched. They would have watched their parents and take, 
take leads from from whatever their parent gave to them. Because a, a 14 year old really is a is a blank slate. You know, and they only learning from the actions of their parents. The majority of the actions is what they learn from their parents. Another thing too is how does a 14 year old get a revolver? Where does he get the money from to buy a revolver? These right, let me ask you this, Bonner. Let me ask you this, Bonner. I, I, I don't want to cut your wisdom, but let me ask you this. Because, you know, like you said, I'm a parent, you know, whatever, right? All right, so there's this little boy in... Uh, so I, I was in the playground with my son, right? And there were some older kids, maybe between 10 and 13 or whatever, right? Um, the, young, the 13-year-old black boy is saying to the white boy and the Indian boy, right? Um, that, you know, while they're fighting, he says, hit that nigga, hit that nigga. Sorry, I don't mean to use the N-word, but, you know, he's using the N-word. Now, if this white boy uses the N-word, right, who, like, if he uses the N-word casually in the sense of, you know, how everybody uses it, right, am I going to look at his parents and say, you're the one who influ influenced this little boy to use the N-word, right, and then, you know, quote-unquote punish them, uh, or was it his environment of the youth that he hangs out with normally at a playground? That's a possibility. That's a possibility that, that you know, let me, let me say this. My parents never used the N-word before. My, the older parents, they, the older folks, right, they don't talk like that. They don't even talk, they don't use the word nigga. Of course. You know I mean? so, so from my, from my point of view. Have you, know, you used it? Of course, because I, I grew up around. When exactly. I to, when I That's the point. The United, no, but I have been influenced. That you, you're right. I've been influenced by the environment that I come up on with rap music and things like that. So I've been influenced. So I mean, I understand your point of view, and I'm not taking that away. You know, and and if maybe if they did more <laughs> to tell me, explain the meaning of these terms and why I shouldn't use these terms, I wouldn't use these terms when I was. But I always use these terms out of out of their purview. Where they, where they didn't have, because some of the curse words. Exactly. I would, I would, curse, I would even curse around my mom's though. That's what I'm saying. saying. If, if you were cursing, lie. what I'm saying is if you were cursing wildly, should yes, your parents yes. be charged for that? I understand your point. I understand your point. I understand. I get it. I get yeah, cause it. Because I, I think I, that what happens is that a lot of, because I think the public fool system, let's be honest, um, the public fool system is really corrupting the youth and not just the public school system but the reality that you your children are going to school right next to the worst of the worst so it could be that there are some really bad parents and then there could just be you're trying to fit in i remember when i was going to school in fact these kids like the, the the fashion was baggy pants right which looks stupid in retrospect but they were telling me hey man could you could your dig even breathe you know like they pretty much pressured me to the point where i had to start wearing you know, let's say adult pants, you know, just to fit in, you know, because my mother was buying the right size clothing, you know, uh, even when if I wanted to get like, I had to start getting, I had to start pressuring her for name brand clothing. And now obviously you could say, well, why is she following into the pressure that I, um, you know, I'm begging her for whatever. Um, but of course I'm just like, I'm getting bullied in school. Well, not bullied. I wasn't getting bullied, but you know, like, it was a serious thing to not be fashionable, to just wear whatever your mother picked up, you know? Um, you know, whatever hand-me-down she found because she's an immigrant with no money, pretty much, right? Um, either way, uh, what I'm saying is that, one, and then not just that, even, like, a lot of our behaviorisms was shaped by our peer groups in these school systems, and the, the Europeans made these peer groups for us. You know, he makes these peer groups for us in the sense of, I, you know... Like, like, yeah, like all the white kids, like in my school, they had tracking. So all the white kids were on one grade and all the black, well, not one grade, one class and all the black kids were in another class. Right. But either way, it's like they make these social groups where they, they really put the, the, the worst performing black kids, you know, or the worst performing kids around you. Uh, and they make sure that it's like habitual. But either way, what I'm saying is that the parent who is really just working every day who's just going about their life working every day and then they feed their kid when they come home, right? Notwithstanding that, there are a lot of things that are happening with this kid that um, that is really outside of the control of the parents. So I would not say, hey, for 14 years, the only influence on this child is, uh, is um, the parent. Now, obviously, you can't have this parent, this helicopter parent, 
who limits music consumption, limits, you know, child interaction, limits all that kind of stuff, which I guess some people can do, but most people are not doing that. Most people don't even see that it's healthy. Uh, most people will harass, like, for instance, if I don't send my kid to school or something, I'm getting harassed every time I bring my kid outside, you know? So it's, and like from other adults, you know, like, where is that kid? Like, where is that kid? Why is that kid not in school type thing? So it's like, uh, you know, and obviously I don't go for the peer pressure, but I understand that most people expect, yeah, send them to school. And what happens is that the school system is not necessarily weeding out the worst behavior. The school system allows you all to fraternize with the worst behavior. And not just that, you, you, like when I went to high school, I was getting harassed by, you know, children who dropped out. Well, not harassed, but one time I did meet some children who dropped out who were like official gang members. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's just it's just not to say that, hey, look, everything that all of my experiences growing up in New York City were based all around what my mother was um, was providing for me. Right. Yeah, so that's I, just not. No, realistic. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. I got it. I got it. In the chat, Trigger Happy 262 says basically only the youth only the youth are all tainted by an environment which is not controlled by any black people. You don't have an eldership adultship high-level thinkers and leaders, we don't have a system. He says the only thing you can maybe say is that the parent, if they really want it, affect change, is to make sure they aren't in these environments. It's like when parents worry about this in white environments. Uh, for time's sake, good, good discussion. Let's say, go to should I, I, I uh, want to say quickly. one thing. What Trigger Habits 262 just said, say this. And what, when he said no eldership or none of that, what other group of people tell their people, y'all too old to talk, y'all don't understand, we ain't gonna listen? I'm just saying. I like that call back there, Bakari. Um, let's go to shoot a British topic number three tonight. Again, we're gonna end at 11. 